Hello everyone, this is uh, Carl Shiflett, and in this short video, I want to talk about the WPF XAM Data Grid Configurator and working with fields. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our <clears throat> our project from last time. Here we go, we're going to fire up the XAM Data Grid. And so when we talk about fields, I want to talk first about this objects this objects panel, then we'll talk about the fields here, and then we're going to talk about the available fields, and of course the add options down here, which allows us to do a whole bunch of really cool things. So in order to work with fields, you have to be selected on the field layout that you want to work on. So the first thing I, I, I want to talk about is this object tree, adding and removing things from here. When you went and did your data binding over here, we did orders, you automatically get an order layout and you can't remove it, right? But let's say that you wanted to add to the order layout, you wanted to um, also expose in a nested fashion, the order details. So if I click on order details here, I've got order layout selected. If I hit the plus button, notice what it did. It went in and added it to this, okay? Then if I click on the order layout, it itself also has a features uh, collection. And I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. All right. So now let's go back to the order details. So when we added order details, we can see we've got a few options to put some uh, fields up there. So I'm going to click on name and then price. All right. So we got those added. And of course, if I come over here and I just expose this... Um, collection now you can see that the name and the price all have data now that's enabled automatically for us and if i go to the features layout let's go ahead and add in the um the id of the feature and the name of the feature and then I, of course i can expose it and now i can see the id and the name here right all right so what i want to talk about first is this panel here i'm going to focus in on here so let's say that you don't want the features layout here anymore well what you can do is you can just come up here and you can click this minus sign now what i want you to notice though if i click on the layout here notice there's no minus okay that's because it has a features layout under there and i didn't want to uh, have a problem with users accidentally deleting too much so you click on the features layout if you want to get rid of it go ahead Okay, and you can see that it was removed from the data. If I go back to the order layout, I, I, I'm back to editing it. I could put it back in if I want. And now at this point, at my option, I can come up here and I can remove that as well. Let's say that I wanted to. And now I can go back to my order layout here. And of course I can work my order layout. So that's how you get your the nesting where we were having the nesting, the master detail, if you will. And of course these down here, these fields here, these are in bold to let you know that these are uh, our layouts, actually. They will allow you to create a nested layout. Okay, so now what I want to do is talk about adding, removing fields. So there's several ways you can do this. So in order to add a, a, a field to a layout, you have to first select the layout. And then down here in your available list, I'm going to click on customer ID as an example. I'm going to click here. And notice that it adds it at the end of the collection of the selected object. Now, let's say that I actually wanted to add uh, this um, customer last name. After customer last name, I want to add the street. So what I can do now is I can make this the selected object. I can come down here to where street is. And now when I add it, watch where it goes. It goes in there and it puts it after the object that was selected. So that's kind of a feature, um, maybe not as discoverable as everybody would want, but essentially, it'll add it to right right on there, you know, which is really nice, right? Okay, so now, so we have that, and that's wonderful. All right, how else can we add fields? Well, we can come down here to the Add Options, and we can click here, and, and we can add an Unbound field. So if I click Add Unbound, it's going to add it right after the first name because that was the selected object. And now we have an unbound field that you can work with. All right. I'm just going to go and remove that for aesthetic purposes. So I have to look at it. Now you can also right here under the add, you can add a field group. I'll get to that in just a second, but you can also do add all. So I'm going to click on this 
and that just went and added all the columns and of course you can see all the sample data binds for each one and the sample data by the way it, it, it tries to figure out and it's using english which which i know could be a problem for um, if you're in a, another country, but the word say, if the word state shows up as an example, th then you get a state. Um, if you have a um, a date, of course you get a date. If you have zip, you get a zip code. If you have city, it knows city at address. It n understands that. Now, what's interesting is address is a complex object, just like customer is, right? So that's like the entire object. That's what you're looking at. So let me just remove all and let's dive into that for just a second. So we have a customer object. <clears throat> the customer object also has an address object on it, which address has a city, state, and zip property. So let's go ahead and add address city to it. So what we get is we get city. But if we come up here and we click on this, we can see we got customer.address.city. So we're dotted into a complex object. Now, when we look over here at the field, if you have, and so let me bring up one so that we can have comparison. So I'm gonna click on like, for instance, order ID, I'm gonna add that field. So when you look at order ID, it just says order ID. And if we come down here to the binding type, it uses name binding and the name is order ID. See, I have that grayed out so you won't go and change it on us. Cause you know, obviously you would never change that if it's data bound to the order ID property. So this is how, when you're binding directly, when this object here, the order object, in this case, if it has a direct property on it, then you, it, it just uses name binding and you have the order ID. Now, we come up here, what's happening is, is we're actually, uh, the, the order ID has a customer object, that all, and the customer has an address object, and then has a city property. So this is where the alternate binding comes into play. And so the name is city, but there is no property city, right? Because it's a nested property. It's way down in these object stacks. So here we have an alternate binding field. So if you just enter customer address city, then the Xam data grid knows how to find that property on the correct object. And it, and of course you, you can see that the data is being shown here. Okay. So, I, um, and, then, and then, then of course here, so let me just add, add like another, uh, one more field. So when you when you've added something to here, you can click the minus and you can remove the one and then remove all removes all of them. Now, one thing I want you to notice is as we've been adding or removing fields, notice that you have the column types. See, this is a string. It's a string property. That's an int 32 and that's a Boolean. But this little icon over here shows you what kind of, uh, of field it is. Right. So it's a Boolean field that, that that's a, a, a numeric field. And if you click on it, it tells you right up here in this is the icon. You, you, you get this little field type. So here you're going to get a text and here you're going to Boolean. Now over here on order ID, if I wanted to, I could change this to use any of these other editors, for instance, a currency editor. So once I said it's a currency, then you, then you get this currency behavior with the you know, with your monetary symbol, and then it goes to two digits. You know, by default, that's all the currency um, editor set up. We also have the mast edit, and, and we have uh, just a, a vanilla field, numeric. We have templates. We have text. So there's all kinds of different um, uh, fields that are available, or the different field editors that you can apply. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to just go ahead and go back to our data grid. And if you want to save, you can save from up here in the quick uh, up here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and hit that real quick so I can show you. So you can see, you know, besides all these settings that have been set, we've got a checkbox field, a currency field, and a text field. And then here you can see how alternate binding works. It does a binding path two-way uh, where we have a label. Notice that these labels are split on the name where, it's ca where, where there's a capital letter. So it automatically splits has been approved into has been approved on the label so it, it 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 tries to use your property names that you have it does its very best it's not going to be perfect but if property names are you know, like fairly descriptive then a lot of times you can it can it can interpolate and figure out oh yeah that would be the best label for you and and it it gives you a good default good starting point right 
All right, so now we come up here and um, all right, so we've talked about adding and removing the different kind of fields. We talked about adding and removing all of them. Uh, let me show you another feature. So if you had quite a few fields, and I'm just going to get ridiculous here and add a whole bunch of fields here. Obviously, you may or may not be doing this. So now all of a sudden, we got all kinds of fields here, right? And I thought it would be difficult for developers to try to work with something. You can't even see everything. So we have this little maximize button. And essentially what it does is it'll take the this... Uh, panel and just make it big for you right so that kind of works out really nice so when you're working on you're working on this panel and you want to do things with it you, you can actually um you know you can maximize it and you can here you can restore it and it's kind of cool now if you're in maximize and then you you switch over here to like data grid or something then it'll switch back automatically for you and make that easy Okay, so now what I'd like to do is take a look at this last option on the add options right here. And you can see that if you don't have a field layout select, this here is going to be disabled. So let's just uh, come over here and select order. <clears throat> In order to make this easy, I'm going to remove all these fields. Let me close this. I'm, I'm going to add a few fields back in here. So for instance, let's see, we got um, city, state, street, zip, and then we had first name. And last name all right so these are probably not in the order that I want them so what I want to do is the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and reorder these so you can click on a field you can drag and drop it and I'm, I'm going to drop it above so now first name is up here and it moved it you can also come over here and just drag and drop a field and just move it right so that's kind of you know that's pretty cool so now we can take this we can take street and move it over here so oh yeah yeah that looks a little bit better now, what if you wanted to put, and the XAM Data Grid has this feature where you can have like a, a heading where you can group fields together under a, a common heading. So let me show you how that works. Over here in the Add Options, we have this thing called a field group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a field group. Now, I'd like to change its name. So the field group that I'm going to use here is going to be a customer. Uh, customer. Okay, so now it, it named it customer field group. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag and drop these fields, these two fields here, right onto the field group. And then I'm going to take this field group and move it to the top. It works just like a field. So now you see I got something really cool over there. So now what I can do is I'm, I'm on my order layout. I can come over here and click another add field group. Okay, there's my field group. I'm going to select it. I'm going to change its field, change its label. So you may want to do this, right? So you can come over here and then you could just come over here and maneuver your items on this little panel here. Okay. Oops, that one didn't make it in, so I, I probably missed it. There we go. Now, one thing you need to know is the XAM data grid doesn't allow you to grab from here and then move it over there. See how you get this non-smoking symbol? So now it does allow you to move within here, okay? And you can see that as soon as I did that, things changed over here as well. I can come back over here and I can maneuver it, all right? So this allows you to do nice grouping. It looks nice. Let's see what that XAML looks like. So come out here and I'm gonna press Control K, Control D. And we come down here and here's my field layouts. They start, so I have a field layout. There's my order and then because I hit the sort button, it added the sorting, it added, um, it added the sort fields because I, I clicked on a field to make it sort. Let me just pull that out for now because we're, we're, we're going to talk about sorting in another, um, uh, in another uh, video. So if you click the sort button, it actually puts it in there. So if you do that, you know, and you didn't mean to, you can pull it out and there's also a ribbon to clean it up. But here we've got ourselves a label, or, sorry, a field group that has customer, and that's over here. And then here's our fields. So you can see that the XAM data grid control configurator really helps you to create some really clean XAML in basically seconds, essentially, right? All right, so now um, I think I've covered all the features of the field. So that's adding fields, removing fields, that's adding the objects up here, removing the objects. And um, 
and of course, uh, you, these fields here, you, you can actually, and by, by the way, you can also nest within here if you want. So watch this. You can click on customer field group, okay? Come down here and say add a field group. So now we just added another field group within here. So this field group is, you know, uh, now very nested. And then if you wanted to, very nested selected, well, I, I, I can click date. So under under this one, under very nested, I've also got a another field. So I could put some more fields in there. I come over here and I can put the customer ID or something. So this allows you to do some pretty high octane things within your UI. Obviously, this is a contrived example, but I think you understand what's going on here. Okay, so have a. Uh, I, I hope you've found the data grid um, configurator useful, and I'm and I know you love using the Infragist Exam Data Grid in your WPF apps. All right, have a wonderful day, and thank you.